What, what do you mean? Are you, is this a character? What are you doing? Do you like them? That's not what I asked. What, uh, what, uh, what are you doing? They're blue light filtering glasses. I oh. wear them through the work day since I sit in front of a computer or a lot of computer screens. Now, weren't you saying those are a scam? Mm, I mean, I think the really expensive ones. I paid $15 for these, so I'm not super concerned. Um, just so long as they do filter out the light, the, the, the color lights that uh, they say they do, and reduces glare, which they do, thankfully. So, huh. Do you... I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay like $200 for these. Do you notice a difference? Like, do you actually see the colors different? Uh, very faintly. This is more from like, cause so I have t both the window settings. You can turn on the, turn on the nightlight mode in your, in that, your settings on your computer. That's where it tints it a little bit yellow. Everything looks well, a little yellow. Well, can do it a lot. Yeah. It makes it a lot. I have mine up pretty high because whenever I turn it off or it gets turned off automatically for like movies and stuff, it, it's a crazy shift in color, but through the day, I don't notice it. Everything I'm looking at is not a picture it's all texts and charts and graphs and stuff like that so because there's something on um on my phone at, at night it automatically shift. well you can change the settings just but it's it, called yeah. night shift and when you turn it on it just turns every i feel like everything turns yellowish like a warm it basically what it's yeah. doing is it's pulling out the blue so it's every color okay. but blue and then it yeah but so, so is that what your glasses color. are supposed to do a little bit like looking back and forth it's very faint. It's not a whole lot, but it does do less. Like I don't see as much of a glow around stuff, and it's just kind of makes it not as jarring. If that makes sense, I think it does filter out certain blue, blue light. Look, uh, look at the camera. Let me see how you look. Let me see if I like this. I like, I like this. I like this look. It's a different look for you. You got the mustache going. You got the glasses <laughs> on. You got the Hawaiian shirt. Eh, kind of. It's a, it's. I guess it's silk with uh, leopards and flowers. I feel like you're going through something right now. You're going. Like what? You're you're entering a phase. I don't know what this phase is, but I feel like I was you're about to shave this off. I was going to shave this off, but I didn't have time today. I was going to shave all. Well, this. look, I did that this. Lengthy. Look, we got the mustache still oh, no. at the same time. We didn't even talk oh, about no. it. Look at that. Now I know what you mean. What do you mean? Hey. <laughs> Are you saying you're going through a thing right now, Stephen? Is that I'm what not you're going through well between, between the lines? I'm not going through a thing, but I'm I'm kind of go I'm going through something. Mm. I'm still sick. I can tell. So when I was think, the last time you saw a doctor? Uh, weeks. I, I've only been to the doctor once. I went to the doctor the one time. I went to an urgent care. Um, but I'm setting up a I'm setting up a, an appointment this week. I kind of had some things this, that's happened in the last week. It's kind of scared me kind of spooked me yeah. a little bit and my impulse is to not go to the doctor because to me when you go to the doctor that's when you find out you have something bad that's when you get something bad yes if i don't you have something bad yeah i i don't i don't want that i think i uh i think i diagnosed myself though i think i've got it figured out what'd you use what i think MD? i um I just typed in my symptoms um, right, okay. and started looking at some of the websites. I think I have canine distemper. <laughs> yeah. How, how did you come to that conclusion? Because I typed in my symptoms and that's what came up. I um, Did you put in that you're human? It's a virus. Uh, why would I have? What do you mean? No. I. Um, <clears throat> it's a virus that attacks the uh -huh. nervous system and all these other things. They develop a fever. I've had a fever. Nasal discharge. Yeah. Ooh. Well, that's the opposite of discharging, but, you know. Oh, because it's discharging, I have to uncharge ah, it. I see. Coughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lethargy. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yup. That's. Lethargy. What is that? How many deadly sins are left? See? Yeah. Yeah, you got um, it all. Um. Reduced app? Well, no, not that one. But um, these all seem kind of generic, though. Well, that's what it says that I have. All right. Well, what kind of doctor does it say to go see? My foot pads are thickened and hardened. 
How hard are they? They're thick and hard. Wow. So I, I don't just uh, bought some foot cream at Target today. I don't think that I have a uh, a good chance. Chances? What percentage of survival? It says uh, head Do tilt. <laughs> head tilt. Well, we'll see. We can review the video at the end of the recording. Mm. But uh, yeah, I'm going to the doctor. Good. I'm glad. Uh, so two things happened this week. So I'm, I still have this cough that I've had for more than a month. Mm-hmm. This week, the cough, I had like a coughing fit. And I basically, I think I popped a rib out of place or something. I have a terrible pain in my abdomen and in my back that I think is a rib that popped out. Or so, you think something. think an entire rib. Just something. Out of place? Out of, yeah. Have you so, broken a rib before? No. Hmm. I've never broken a bone in my body. Right? Who really? does that? I think we've talked about that. Who does that? So, I did that in my in this finger. Um, I feel a pain like right here in my in my abdomen, and on the same spot I feel it in my back. But I only feel it like sometimes when I'm moving around. Now it's getting better, so it only hurts at certain positions. Yeah. But for a while it was it was really bad. Like I couldn't sleep, and uh, yeah. So that happened, and I'm like, okay, I shouldn't be coughing that hard where mm-hmm. my ribs are trying to pop out of my body. And then I also, this is the part that scared me because this is a real thing I did Google. Um, I have these brown lines coming up on my fingernails. Like, and like going very, down. I like, don't think you would be able to see it. Mm-mm. Maybe in the recording. No, yeah, in the recording you'll be able to see it. So, But there's a little one there and there's a little one. Where is it on this one? It's kind of towards the middle of the nail there. There. Yeah. But, um. And so I start, and they're just, they're these little, it looks like I have splinters. It looks like I have little tiny wooden oh. splinters in the tips of my fingernails, but I don't yeah. feel it or anything like that. But I just happened to be looking at my nails and I saw that. So I, I Googled it and it said, oh, mm-hmm. you have nothing to worry about. If you have these little brown lines in, um, in your fingernails, you have nothing to worry about. It's caused from trauma that happens to the hand. There's nothing to worry about. And then the next okay. chapter said, if you haven't it. had any trauma on your hand, go to a doctor Uh-oh. immediately because it could be a sign of something worse. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to worry about unless you haven't hurt yourself. Which I haven't. It just they came out of nowhere. That was going to be my first question was like, did you slam your fingers in a door or something like that? Because I'll get those like, like kind of like a bruise coming from where like your finger, your hand is going out towards your fingertip. No. And it's so weird because it's like these perfect like – very thin, fine lines. Wow. Um, yeah, so I saw that. I'm a little, I'm a little spooked. Um, well, better uh, to find out sooner than later. Yeah. So, so uh, we'll see, uh, see what happens um, with that. That's no point. No. Yeah. Um, on a side note, well, it's not fun to sit not knowing. You know, that's, that's going to be the worst thing. And I, yeah, and I think that's that's probably making me sicker is just the anxiety it, 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 I, I have this anxiety and it's like a it's mm-hmm. pit in my stomach um just a heads up i may i i'm probably gonna get a call during this recording um gotcha so we'll we'll pause and then we'll come back because that won't oh, be uh, good. something that's uh included in the recording there yeah um but uh yeah that's what's going on with me wow. how are you buddy i'm all right I'm just enjoying the day off and getting my work. And your big for boy job. Yeah, it's been. It was a good first week. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I. It's just a lot of reading, studying, learning, all these sorts of tools and stuff. And yeah, I feel like the talking on the phone part is going to be the easy part, and it's going to be trying to find all the technical answers for when we get calls for a certain. Now topics. is there. So you're basically an IT guy. You're you're like yes. the uh, what do they call it? Round one, entry level, or whatever. What is it? Uh, kind of <laughs> tier one. Yes, yeah, so we're the first. We only work for employees of the company, and so we don't actually work with any customers. Okay, so but if and I'm an so, employee of the company and I just call the generic IT hotline, the you're VR, that yeah, first line the, that's going to pick up. We're the first person, and yeah, we. So whenever somebody that. is is calling. Do you have, like, they tell you, my printer is saying this or this or this. Like, do you have, like, a database where you type in these keywords and it kind of leads yeah. you to, hey, so, try this? 
or do you just a, know it in your head and you have to memorize a book of 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 thought patterns or how does that work it's it's actually it's both of those for sure because there is just knowing what tool to fix what problem and you'll get a few routine problems but for the most part uh, a lot of things if you know if you can figure out how to search that database of answers you can it'll walk you through how to fix most of those problems sometimes they're different sometimes they're unique sometimes there are special projects and so those things uh, are going to be able they, they'll will vary in terms of how you actually go about figuring it out yeah. and then you can also ask any of your coworkers. Um, technically the people you're helping are your coworkers, but the support team that I, I work with we have a we have a slack channel that we can message everyone through and you know they have dedicated people like level you know the level above us um, basically so there's like us senior techs and then they start getting to the managerial level where they're kind of helping orchestrate their unit and then above them is you know then kind of everyone who orchestrates those people got it so there's a lot of there's a lot of support and help especially for uh me starting out but then the other parts are yeah you have to know again what tool do you actually use how do you you know what do you actually need to go about fixing things that might not be in the database but it's, so the reason uh, i ask about uh -huh. about that is because i almost feel like Tier one IT jobs are not needed. I feel like it can be replaced with a robot or an AI that and they are. takes these keywords and yeah. says, all right, this is the most common thing. Let's try this. Mm -hmm. Let's try this. Let's try this. After the AI has tried three things and the person says it's not still working, then it gets forwarded to a, a human that knows more, mm -hmm. knows probably more even than you, you know? So yes, there is some of that going on where AI does. I think for this one, because this, this the level the, the people we work with, the number one priority is always getting them back to work as soon as possible. And what we've been told is that sometimes the quickest way is to give them a very short-term Band-Aid and then they will overnight them a new laptop or any of the hardware that they need to get back up and running. And they said there is, you know, don't just uh, make that be the fix-all for everything. But they say after, like, if you spend 20 minutes with someone, it's, you know, depending on what what you're working on, it's not the worst, you know, it's not a don't do, you know, at all, uh, or it's not a concern in terms of just replacing the laptop and whatever stuff that they have. Because you got to keep in mind the there's such going to be such a wide age range of everyone. So they're onboarding like thousands of new people um, just to keep up with demand because they're growing so much. And so it really comes down to what, you know, why not wasting those th first three, like, well, let's try this, let's try that. Cause there already are some systems that are hybrid. The hybrid systems do work the best. And what you're talking about is sort, you know, is a hybrid system where the very first like line of defense Most is phone calls into an IT help desk, are the simple ones that yes the hey have you tried restarting it um you know and that does fix a lot of things but the short answer would be that a lot of people don't know what the problem is and that's where an ai is going to come up short because it's going to have a hard time i'm sure over time eventually it will you know you can train one to to do that sort of stuff reading between the lines what are they actually yeah. asking sort of things and that's just something a human still uh, for now, at least, I think just does better right off the bat. Plus that human touch, just talking, because you can usually tell if you're talking to an AI menu. Yeah. And there is just something, especially with some of the age of some of the people we work with, or I would say they're in a de demographic that's a lot more prone to not liking that at all, wanting to talk to a person right just off the bat. Just want to talk to a human. Exactly. So just getting, you know, cutting to the chase with that, because the cost, I'm sure they could save a lot of money. Um, for some of that and they're you know they're the people who are calling us do have access to all the answers we do so if they could type in the proper keywords they're able to do there's there's only a couple of things that only we can do where we have permission to and we can do we can fuck shit up like if we move one copy of like all of uh, like all this program that 80 percent of the people that i work with use if we move it from where its installation folders are kept to like somewhere that hey where the fuck is this no one will be able to access that until someone figures it out and then uploads, you know, a backup, you know. A yeah, let's say they probably have a backup. Or like, yeah, you could. It, I wouldn't say that's fucking something up. You can temporarily cause havoc for a moment, but it's not. Yeah, 
Oh, right. It's momentary, but still, you're you're bringing complete stop. Yeah. To what some people could even be able to and, if, a and the people we were working with do work with customers. Got and so it. then they're like, uh, well, excuse me, hold on. My thing's just not working. I know you're paying by the hour to use us Got and sort it. of thing. So, yeah. All right. Well, now we know if they ever try to screw you around, <laughs> we'll uh, wreak havoc. But I'm liking it. I'm having a great time. Everyone's nice and supportive. Um, and then, you know, I'm still just getting my work space set up and i find what have you got... found out about like what have you learned about um working from home and what i guess works for you what doesn't work things that you didn't think about it completely just works for me does it with shepherd yeah especially with the amount of breaks we get we get you know an hour lunch we could pick between 30 minutes or an hour lunch but then we get uh two 15 minute breaks so we're working for you know usually an hour and a half to two hours taking a 15 minute break working another hour to two hours taking a, a lunch and then repeating that same thing in the last half of the day. So that gives me Simple time enough. to just walk Shepard out. I'll just go sit in the sun. Like if I'm, if I'm just, if I don't have, you know, I don't have anything to do. I'll just go sit outside on the patio and get some sunshine. Um, that's nice. That's nice to snacks. be able to do throughout the day. So I do the same thing. Yeah. Like after I have usually like after I have a meeting or if I'm just been working on a stressful project, I'll just stop and like, Oh, I take Pablo out for probably seven or eight walks throughout the day. He doesn't need it, you know. He, right. he, you know, sure he only shifts twice it. a day, but I, he enjoys <laughs> it. But it's really for me to just to get out and just, Gotta you know, you get the fresh air. But also there is something to that sunlight, man, going out there and just feeling the sunlight. Even when it's hot outside, mm -hmm. just for a moment to go out there and feel that, oh, it's uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, that's not, and that just trading that for commuting time. Because one thing I do miss when I work mm. close to home is that I don't get to listen to podcasts as much. I just, mm -hmm. you know, except for certain some some days. But well, when you're out of training, this, you'll yeah. have times between calls where you can probably listen to podcasts and do whatever. depends. There's there's seasons where we're busy, seasons where we're slow. Right. So when it's slow, it's like an hour between calls. When yeah. it's busy, it's not. It's just back to back as long as you're on. And you you're, you're, one, you're is it like an auto dialer? Like you just like. Say, all right, I'm on the air or I'm on online. Yeah, I just, I, it's, it's all through a computer. There is no, I, you know, voice, voice phone or anything like that. Like some jobs yeah. do. This is, it ties into a system that then distributes calls to whoever the next available tech is. And we just get to work. Nice. Yeah. And working from home, that's good for you. I've I think that's probably good for most people. I mean, I yeah. struggle with it sometimes of just the, the social aspect. I, I love talking to people right. and so um there's sometimes that i i don't talk to anybody all day mm. and um and I, I sometimes i don't realize it in the moment but it takes a toll on me i miss even if it's just a, a bullshit conversation about the weather or whatever like just that human contact i i really thrive off of that and so right um but uh you know you have a good um support system of people around you to where you can do that. And as of right now, especially you don't even, you don't even live alone. You know, you live, you live exactly. with somebody. So even if it's not a pleasant conversation, even just talking about, Hey, did you take the trash out or, you know, whatever is still human have contact. An exchange. Yeah. 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 Thankfully in this job, we do a lot of just talking amongst one another and you can always call someone up on zoom and just chat. Yeah, that's true. I mean, stuff. I guess even the, the so. callers and stuff, that's still somebody, you know, you talk about yeah, that while too. something's loading, you're, Oh, how's your day going? Where do you, you know, Oh, bullshit well, it's conversations. Monday, you know? Right. Yeah. I'll talk to Shepard a lot. I'll call him over. He'll just come and he'll look at me and be like, yeah. why aren't we going somewhere? Right. Yeah. We're here again. So I try to take him out and just let him run around, uh, give him some attention and been doing his dog puzzle a lot more for him. And I think he really enjoys that. Okay. So put a few things all on that, so he's also getting that, and so just you makes put, it like, easier to also brush there, him right? through the day. You yeah, put, yeah, okay. Or some just dog food. Really, he's motivated that, that that much by just food. Eventually, yeah. When so, I'll give him a bowl of food, and if he's not eating it, then I'll put it in there. And then sometimes, it, if he'll see me eating, then he'll want to eat, and then he'll eat. So it's just he has a few ways of few few triggers that make him hungry. <laughs> yeah. Nice. But I like it. I like having the sit stand desk a lot. It's great. I spend the first Dude, half of the day standing, second half of the day sitting, and it feels a lot better to sit just that last half of the day. Yeah. Especially if I want to play games after work, I don't feel like it's just a continuation of being in the same 
position and spot and all that stuff. It kind of helps, today. even though you're technically in the same spot. It's a different mm-hmm. feel, and, and yeah, that's nice. I like that. I want, I'm I'm excited to uh, to get that. And I also I, got this dope ass twenty dollar headset. Okay, I actually wow, bought that's this heavy the one duty. Look it. at that. It's super light. You're ready to to start broadcasting NFL football. Yeah, it does a pretty good job of keeping every, all the other like outside noise. I keep the fan going the whole time. And how's uh, the mic on it? Is it a shitty mic? It's not. I feel the like a lot of those mic. are pretty shitty. It's pretty meh. Like it doesn't have any of the depth or anything like that. But compared to what I've heard on some of the other mics, yeah, it it sounds pretty good. Nice. And it just like I can keep it pretty far away and not like blowing on it and shit. And it's just nice to not have to you know try to be typing, moving around. And, yeah. Because I tend to move around a lot when I talk. If I'm going through a process, yeah. yeah. Do you ever do that? Do you just like forget what? What's that word where you go back and forth when you're walking like that? You're thinking, you're in deep thought. Is it pacing? Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. I do that. Um, I definitely do that when I'm on the phone with somebody. Mm-hmm. I'll just walk around, and it's funny because Pablo is like wondering what's going on. Why are you walking? Are we going somewhere? What are we? What are we doing? <laughs> um, yeah. I like yeah, I'll, I'll definitely definitely do that. Um, yeah, I'm excited to have a a stand up a stand up desk. I've never had that before, but I do sometimes whenever I am working, I'll just set up my laptop on the the bar area Counter. behind me oh, okay. and kind of stand up, put it on the bar area. Then I have a little um, like a shoebox that I'll put it on, so it's like you know a good uh, a nice little setup there. But uh, yeah, the real deal is going to be nice. There you go. Well, nice. So you got your job. You're enjoying your job. What else is what else is happening in your life? Did you, do you have a new apartment? You look at last time we talked. Well, I guess Not last time yet. we talked. Oh, yes. And that reminds me. I also have something I need to check in with you on. But yes, I went and looked at some apartments yesterday. Well, I looked at a apartment yesterday because the one the units I wanted to see weren't available. But for the price range, it's about what I was expecting. Yeah. Um, they're not crazy nice, but they are. You know, you're going to be living in the hood a little bit. A little bit. It, but... No matter what you do, you're going to be at least at least on the border of the hood. You're exactly. not going to be. Exactly. And that's yeah. where I felt so kind of more comfortable with this. We'll see. I'm still looking around and whatnot, but they have units available November 1st. They had one for October 15th, but I think it's too small. I was like looking at what the the one that they had, and it was like 700 square feet, 750 square feet. Too small? Yeah, it's too small. What do you have? Oh, you have a lot of stuff. I have well, I have yeah, the bed. I have a lot of shelves. Uh, I want it because I want to have all the plants. I have my workbench, this desk, and then just arts and crafts stuff and tools. Yeah. Okay. Some of it I can keep stored, but I've got to start. I got to like half my stuff still in storage, and I want to. Yeah. Actually, have it. You know. But uh, it's going okay because I know at least there are these these and i think if i go for one between 900 and a thousand dollars um that was let me put more away for the long term and so that's what i think i'll opt for rather than going for too big so they have one that's like 980 square feet for like a thousand it's a good size yeah and it's two-story so there's like the bedroom a full bathroom upstairs and then downstairs is the kitchen, living room, and then like a little dining area. And that would make that the office. So I've looked at some two bedrooms, but they tend to jump up to like 1200 yeah. pretty quick. 12, 1300. Is there, um, with the bedroom up top, is there a, a door or is it just you go upstairs and it's open? It's not a loft. It, there's a door. Okay. So yeah. a lot of those don't have that. Like it's just, it's kind of like, I guess, like that loft setup. I don't like, I like to be able to close the bedroom door. Close the door, yeah. I like that. I feel better like that at night. Like I close. And I think it helps them with keeping the temperature up there consistent, you know? Yeah. So I sleep better too at night. Yeah. I don't have to be getting up adjusting. I hate getting up at night to just make a fine little adjustment to something. Yeah. Because I'm just someone, I, I don't know. Uh, you try to keep your eyes closed so that you can keep the sleepiness in. and Yeah. yeah I know what you, you just mean. like drift in and out. Yeah. In and out. Yeah. Nice. But. Well, we recorded last week. I was not in the mood last week. I was in a funk last week. 
It all happens. Yeah. So we recorded and about halfway through. I was just like, yeah, we're not doing this. I'm feeling better this week. Even <laughs> yeah, though I still think I got the distemper. But um, outside of that, I feel like I'm, I think I'm getting better. Well, uh, I don't know that I'm ready to get into the Steve show this week. But, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll. I'm sick we'll enough. I don't need. <laughs> I don't need the stomach acid from watching <laughs> that. But uh, yeah, so we'll get to that at, at some point. Um, if anybody's listening and they care. I don't know. <laughs> People will listen. I saw. There's views I definitely did not click because I don't watch mo- any of them on YouTube. So <laughs> Really? I haven't logged yeah, I into the YouTube to see. I'll watch a couple, but. Um, yeah. We get some regular downloads. So people oh. are at least subscribe to us on. Uh... How many? Because one of those, one of them is mine. <laughs> No, on yeah. average, we're getting 18 to 19 downloads a week. Are you shitting me? Yeah. Wow. Which two of those are mine <laughs> just because I monitor two yeah. different apps to see how it comes in and when God. it comes in. So I, I'm subscribed on Apple Podcast and I'm subscribed on uh, uh, Overcast. That's my main podcasting mm-hmm. app just because I want to see what it looks like whenever it comes on there and you know yeah. how it transfers from when we do this here to how it's actually being broadcast does it tell you which services the downloads are from um it uh i'm sure may, maybe it does i just look at the main graph there's like a graph whenever you first log into the website um and then so it shows your weekly downloads i haven't actually dug into it but um hmm. so i don't know though but nobody i nobody's told me hey this is good maybe it's because it's bad <laughs> maybe people are listening and it's bad so they don't want to say anything i don't know but uh, nobody's told me that they've listened to it, hmm. other than our mutual friend T. Yeah. Um, which I don't know if she actually listens on a regular basis or just that first episode, but she um, has. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. We're having a good time now. We're having fun. I'm enjoying. We're going to be it. doing so this anyways. We're going to be sitting here talking every, exactly. every for an hour every week, anyways. Might as well record it and put it out there. Look what came in the mail. T- couple days ago. whoa all it's the way a, from shanghai china somewhere shenzhen or yeah wow Here it is. it's a split keyboard it's it's got a learning curve so i'm going very slow with it but really so is right that now, what you're using right now it. no not right now i don't have it plugged in there's i have an issue with i need to modify what buttons are where on the software side okay and i'm it's not letting me so i can use it but it, the buttons i've since arranged it where I physically want the buttons to go, and so now you just have to link them up to the yeah, logic so just to show you a little the, bit where it, the way it, the layout is. Okay, I can't. It's kind of blurry on my end. What are those red orange buttons? So this one, okay. So this one over here on the outs on the outside or inside is the yeah. space bar. This and one's it, backspace. So are those? Is the space bar? Do you have that on both sides of the keyboard? I actually, I do. Originally, it's not, but I have it set up that way so that I can hit spacebar with either or. Okay. But you, if you, if you're, if I think if you're, I'm not the, I'm not a good typist. Yeah. So for me, it's just like I, I wouldn't be able to be as efficient as some people can, to where they then will do, a, what do you call it? They'll have just the spacebar on one side, delete or whatever on the other. So I have it go from left to right. Space, enter, backspace, space. So okay. my thumbs can do that. And then the control and Windows buttons and all that are just kind of peppered. The F keys are, so here's the original keys. I've swapped them out. Here's the the white keys here are the ones that originally were on there. And so you can see the F keys tiled up at the top. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know if it's too blurry. But, yeah. So I've been excited. I'm just trying to re That is exciting. You've been, been excited about that for a long time. Yeah, just because uh, I've been building my own, but it's such a pain. I need to, I can't finish, I can't, I need to print a case. So I actually have it hold to solder the little, yeah, uh, what are they called? Switches on, but. I don't, you had to wait a long time because it was a group bot or what do they call it? It's like a. Yeah, I think it's on the store. You can buy this for like 185 I got it on sale because I bought it. I pre-ordered it for like 130 Right. 120 or 130. But it's like and a certain so, number of people have to all buy one before they send a shipment of it. It's not like you buy one they and do they it direct ship it to you. So this it's like, one will – yeah, this company, I don't know, but generally with keyboards and just like with the demand of supplies to make them, yeah, generally they only will do the like wait for so many orders and then they order them all and then they ship them out. It's interesting. But it could be a couple months. <laughs> I ordered this a few months ago. 
But wow. this is really cool. I'd also really like here. I want to make sure I don't run over Shepard. Is that if I can put him on the uh, on my chair? Uh, so that way I can sit wait. back and type like. Are that. you actually gonna do that? I'm gonna make something that'll let me set them on there, and then I'm gonna make a custom cable because these have a cable connecting them, and they're not wireless. So I would have. I need to run a cable like around the back of the chair, but then have it so that way I can type that way and actually like sit in the back of the chair. Where I think it's gonna be not so practical is the fact that I'll have to like, I'm used to like leaning in to look at certain letters and stuff like that. I think just naturally. So it would feel awkward. I think at first to have just the keys and sit back, I'd have to probably make the, uh, make the font, the text bigger. Well, what, yeah. Well, what about the mouse? The mouse. So I've grown to really like this track. This right here. But where do you put that in your side? I would, I mean, if anything, you have a whole just, tray in front of you of, I just, well, here's what the right hand is like altogether. So this is the right hand keyboard, Whoop. and this is the mouse. And so normally, what I do when I'm working, when I am typing on this keyboard, is I'll have this mouse between the two keypads. And so, I mean, honestly, I could just like set this mouse on my lap and use that. Oh, you know what you do? Because it's a trackball. What? Is you learn how to do it with your foot? Put it on the ground. Oh shit! I'm not even joking. You put it down, so you just kick I'd back. Have to and you just have it with your with your with your foot there, with your little toes. And, and then I have like a big old like left click right click button for my left foot. To, yeah. Like I'm like pedals, like pedals in a car. Really and I'd have to. Oh my god, highlighting stuff would be just you click and then you with your other foot. And it's a workout. It's cardio. That is a fuck. Your yeah. I I'm, I'm See, not trying people to make something with underestimate that. Underestimate what's happening here in this brain. <laughs> I will estimate you correctly. I think this time. is my. This is my second good. My other idea is the one that you do with your mouth, which you told which me that is a real exists. thing. That's our, yeah, that's a very real thing. Because I was thinking you put something in there that's like a trackpad, like a trackpad or something, on the roof of your mouth, and you use your tongue to hit the roof of your mouth, like you would be clicking or scrolling or moving the mouse. Yeah, that's what I think. So we should do. I don't know why, but like I want it. I want to do it. I think there's just more efficient ways. You, they have pretty good eye trackers now. So I would say if you're going to have someone like lounging like this, have an eye tracker, like just one little camera up here or something like, or two cameras here to just be able to read someone's eyes and you just look at where it is. And then you have like little clickers or something on your hands or fingertips yeah. or on your armrests. So like one other thing that's really cool with these keyboards is when you put, not just these specifically, but any like custom keyboard is that you can put layers of buttons. So like virtual layers of different buttons on it so it's like if i were to have profile one and then i you know profile one's like the normal letters and numbers and then if i like were to go to like profile two or layer two i could have it change kind of like when you hold this think of it as like holding the shift key God. and so instead of doing the number six you do uh, an up you know a carrot if you're instead of doing a two you do the at symbol so it like it temporarily cool. changes and like that. if you're working in a specific program that has its own shortcuts you can even Make its own layer, Make absolutely. Make it its own thing where it's just everything is on one hand that you would ever need, you know, for that. That's pretty cool. I yeah. love that I have um, – I love that I have a friend that's, like, excited about geeky, nerdy things like that. One, because yeah. I geek out and nerd about some things, but also just, like um, – because it helps me when I don't know the answer to things. You know the answer to a lot of things that I don't know the answers to. You do I, too. We well, all, no, we all bring think, a little something to the table. No, I think that you know more things that I need answers to than I know about things that you need answers to. I think you know. I don't think you ever just as much, ever if not more, because questions. I don't even know the question. <laughs> so <laughs> you're a step ahead of me in everything in that way. No, but like, when is the last time you ever had to ask me a question about something that I knew about that you didn't know? See? I think I have a lot of questions about how some things work, but kind of. I ask I you a lot, a lot of questions, questions. You're whether it's on here or on host text. Well, not even just that, but just like texting about my personal life and needs and things like that. Mm -hmm. I ask you questions and you always have the answer. I don't have a answer. I don't know if it's the answer, but it's the answer that works I just for me. Pull shit out of my ass and just. And see, that's why we work well somebody. together. You pull it out of your ass. I put stuff <laughs> in my ass. Like, it, and that's why we're a good team. 
We balance each other out. Um, Which reminds me, because I don't want, I'm not going to let you get away from this, but I'm supposed to check in with you about that little work run-in with your new coworker. And you said you were going to talk to this person to let them know. Uh, awesome. How'd that go? No, I did say that. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be so proud of you. <laughs> I um I did say that I haven't um I haven't talked to him. Um Are you avoiding? Have you had opportunities to talk to this person? No. That's the thing is I haven't had any other really interactions with him. And I don't think that it mm-hmm. warrants a specific reaching out and saying, Hey, can I call you? Cause we're not, well, not at this we're not, point. We're not in the office. We're so far from it. So it's not like we're going to be like hanging out and you know, we pass each other in the hall or at the microwave yeah. waiting but to warm up do. our ramen noodles. But so it's, it's different than like if we were in person, mm-hmm. you know, being like, cause it's like a more effort and like more of a thing. I don't want to make it a right. Thing. You're making it a thing. If I, I mean, say, "Hey, I need to talk to you. Can you call me?" Like that's like a big thing. I wouldn't put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't now. I mean, you can, but I wouldn't now because now it's been so much time has passed since when it happened. Mm-hmm. This is like an episode of Seinfeld, where we're trying to. How so, do you go back? It could have just. We we should rewatch Seinfeld, and I'm sure there's an answer for how to not handle this at least in one of their episodes. So the so uh, one, my coworker, the coworker that I had texted that right. to, um, has been working more closely with him, and has said that he's why. he's chill, he's mm-hmm. cool. So I feel Without like it? he gets it. Like he's like not afraid of like. I think he's I think he's good. I think it's fine. I think- I think and it'll get addressed at the anxious, Christmas party or something that like that. Thing, we'll have a couple of drinks <laughs> and uh, I'll be, you know, Hey, 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 do you, do you remember the time? Remember the time that I cussed you out on the, I am <laughs> I'll be drunk and sloppy. He'll be drunk and sloppy. All will be well. Get sloppy together. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, no, I haven't, haven't talked to him, but, uh, you know, well, I don't feel, uncomfortable with it anymore yeah. i feel from my friend says that that he's chill um he hasn't he didn't as far as i know didn't report me to hr my boss hasn't pulled me aside i haven't got a um a meeting invite from the manager of hr so i feel all right there you go yeah i don't think it's an issue from the sounds of it or something like i feel like your coworker may have told you if that were Cons- you know, if there was any reason yeah. to, you know, think about it. So you'll have, yeah. Yeah, at least like you said, you'll have a good story to share over some drinks sometime. Yeah. I'm officially, um, with my work and like, it's, it, it's public information now, public knowledge that in a month mm-hmm. from now I will be moving. So right now I'm in San Diego. I'm going to be moving to, um, Petaluma, California, which is just Petaluma. outside of San Diego, about an hour outside of San Diego. Um, so I'm very excited from that. I get to keep my job and continue to work That's remote, good thing. which was something that I had to work hard for. Um, it took some, you know, some meetings and convincing of, of, oh, of yeah. people, um, you did because it. the, 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 the company feeling company attitude is, Hey, we're going to work in person as soon as we can. Right. Which uh, we don't, I don't know. They pushed it back so many times now when the office is going to reopen based on what's going on. Um, with COVID-19 and, and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, another thing that I, that I said, you know, and I think this is what really helped me get it is mm-hmm. look, if you guys say no to this, that I can't work from home and I either leave the company or if it makes me decide not to move or whatever, and then it turns out we're going to end up working another year from home. Do you know how pissed off I'm going to be? Because it would have had no difference. You know what I mean? Like it would have had no difference if we're going to be working from home because of the pandemic. Because I had already from the from 2020 in spring of 2020 Mm -hmm. when we started working from home, 
I brought up the idea of moving because this opportunity for me to move up north to Petaluma, and mm-hmm. it's it's a uh, I'll be moving into a house with a friend that um, it would drastically reduce my rent. I have a group of friends up there, whereas in San Diego, I'm basically here by myself. I've wow. had this opportunity for a long time, and I brought it up as like, hey, I'm gonna go up there since we're gonna be working from home anyways, and they were very adamant that no, you can't do that uh... because I think they thought. Yeah, we're going to do this for a couple of weeks and then we'll be back in the office and then look what happened. So I told them, I was like, if this happens for another year, I'm going to be pissed that I put my life on hold to go up and do that. And I had to work from home anyway. So you wouldn't have noticed whether Mm -hmm. I was here, San Francisco or Nepal, like nobody would have known. So I think that kind of helped, um, Helped help them make the decision to try it out. And it's on a tentative basis. You know, we're going to go back and exactly. they, they're like, we'll review it every quarter and see how it's working for both you and for the company. And da, 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 da. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. But I'm incredibly thankful to the company. I'm so excited for this. Um, I think part of the reason, like, you know, like when I was in my funk last week, I kind of am in this weird little kind of um, – moment of like i'm just i'm so excited to be there and the fact that i have to wait for it is kind of depressing to me like i just want to be there uh, yeah um and Not it's cut. yeah so uh, take a shortcut to get to where you want yeah and i just have to now it's just a waiting game right mostly i just have yeah i just have to um wait because i had to um you know plan out some things financially to you know get the u-haul and of I'm, I'm buying some furniture and stuff it's like that. Just, everything has to line up um, and, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, about a month, basically this time next month, um, is when I'll be moving this weekend. It's uh, October so awesome. the 10th. So excited, man. I'll have to get you a home, uh, home warming gift. Yeah. I want you guys to come visit. I do too. You and anybody else. I want, I, I want, <laughs> I love California. Look, I love right. California and I love people in Texas. I will never <laughs> live in Texas, though, ever again. Mm-hmm. But I miss the people. I wish I could take all my favorite people from Texas and bring y'all out here. That's what I want. Someday, maybe. There's nice. also this meeting in the middle. Meeting in the middle? Like in Colorado. I'm not moving to Colorado. Yeah, I know. I'll come visit. What if we had two houses that we had, like, one in Colorado and we had one in California for Who is we? The three of us. Well, we can have it set up like a uh, what's the term? A commune? No, not a better Menage a trois. But we'll just have like, well, whoever wants within our friends network that would want to stay in Colorado for some of the time, then go to California for the other. I mean, I think this is us living separately and then visiting. With them. Yeah. <laughs> It might, we might be better just, you know, renting yeah. a room at the Holiday Inn, you Let's, know, once a year than oh, trying yeah. to buy another house in a third spot. Sure. Um, oh, God. Yeah. Overcomplicating it. Is that where you want to go, though? Is that your, your dream is California? Or, I'm sorry, Colorado? It's not a dream. I, I all honestly have only driven through Colorado, yeah. but it's just the things that I did like from Maine and that area and then things I like about being a little farther south. Um, I do have a you know a good group of friends up there, uh, but also the mountains, the hiking, the op- more just still having open spaces and stuff like that. What we have all you that have here in California? Yeah, it's I don't know if I, I don't know. It, I think it's just going to be a lot more expensive, and parts of Colorado are expensive. Yeah. And so, like, what all we'll be able to get with how much money we have at that time is going to be a big thing. And I don't want to, like, it's going to, we'll see. Like, it really could go either way. I'm not obviously opposed to California. I think I'm more drawn to Colorado right now. You know what, though? Something that I think, and I think this aligns with kind of both of our attitudes is, Mm -hmm. and not not only our attitudes, but our, um, where we're at in our lives. I think we're building ourselves to a point to where it's going to be easier to travel and we'll be willing to travel more often on a, at least for me, I see myself, you know, once I get settled in and I'm, I, I'm going to be able to save money with my rent mm-hmm. as like deciding, Hey, 
I just got an email from Spirit Airlines that says they have a fifty-two dollar flight, you know, round trip to to uh, Cincinnati, just a random place that doesn't matter, and yeah. just go there. And like, what if Hell me and yeah. you both decide, like, we both end up getting that email for that round trip flight to just wherever, and we can go and do it. And it's you know, it, we can be there for four days, and it doesn't matter what's necessarily in Cincinnati, Ohio, but we'll be there exploring it together. And we can work from home. We'll take our laptops with us. That's what I want. I want no to be one's going to notice, you know, work wise, yeah. and then we get to have these experiences. So it doesn't have to be every time you're flying up to San Diego or San Francisco, and. I'm flying to Denver or wherever you're going. It could mm -hmm. be just wherever we happen to go. We'll have that flexibility in our life, um, you know, in multiple ways for work, financially, and just mentally as well to just be like, yeah, let's do it. It doesn't have to be at like, you know, for me in the past, like if you're going to go on a, a trip, you're going to travel somewhere on an airplane. It's planned out months in advance. You have to have right. all this. No spur of the moment. Why? Why does it have? Let's just, we can do it. Well, you know, we'll be in a position where we can just do it. Yeah, and you know what I'm hoping is it's really unknown to us, I think, right now that if traveling like that becomes more available, is the price going to go up? How much is it going to go up? How crowded? You know, what are, how how is that going? You know, what is mass, or not mass transportation? Well, I guess mass transportation. Yeah. But traveling around the world and stuff, is what's that going to look like for the next, you know, five years Yeah. in terms of, checking in and i mean i'm off you know i'll be comfortable with like getting you know medical tests and stuff like that but you know to like show like hey you are healthy and fit for travel or something like that like i can get that but more just like are, if more people are traveling does that mean busier airports busier taxis ubers all that sort of stuff and then yeah. and then is there a rebound well it's like oh it becomes too expensive or just the cost on uh you know global emissions and stuff maybe it'll balance out because i think the fuel efficiency for moving a bunch of people in one vehicle is a lot better than people moving themselves from work to you know from a from where they live to where they work so that offset would still probably be a net positive but yeah we'll see because yeah it's cool to see some flights for like 40 bucks 60 70 dollars and it's Dude, round trip it's... to somewhere for a weekend or just a week yeah. or something like that I just always thought that would be a cool thing. I don't know where I – I feel like I got that idea from somewhere. I don't think that I came up with it. If I did, I, I think it's really smart. But I've just <laughs> – me, you know, the fact that you know you live in Texas, I live in California. I don't mm -hmm. have to go to California to Texas to see you and vice versa. We could both meet up in you know, bumfuck Iowa. Wherever. You know, yeah. wherever just happens to be cheapest because those flights coming from you know, San Diego to Dallas in general – they're pretty expensive. You know, I, mm -hmm. I don't ever see them really get down too low, except in the middle of the pandemic last year, I did make that trip. Um, cause I got a flight, a round trip flight for like $86. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, that was like a weird one off thing. Um, yeah, but I see, you know, trips all the time to like these random cities that are really are 40, $50 that are round trip, you know? And, and you can get, find some really cool places and not in, you know, the popular, you know, big spots and whatnot. Yeah. I think depending on where you're going, like I wouldn't, if I were to try some new barbecue, like I've never had South Carolina barbecue from South Carolina or Tennessee style barbecue because I think they tend to do more whole hog sort of stuff. In Texas, it's all brisket. So nothing, yeah. not that I have anything against, you know, how good brisket tastes, but getting barbecue from some other places, from some other states, uh, especially when you're not paying like the touristy big city price uh options yeah you can get some good inexpensive food f and just it'd be absolutely amazing yeah absolutely so i would love to be able to do that food right. is my biggest motivator for travel like i you you can get me to go to anywhere if if i can uh if i know i'm going to have a chance to try some new foods all right then i think i think 2022 is going to be a year where we, me and you experience some cool things together I'm hoping. Yeah. Get the apartment and then we can uh I'm gonna ferment some peppers, make a hot sauce. So we'll get to experiment with that. Be made with those jalafuegos. A fermented fermented hot sauce. What is what is that? Is that a thing? Is it more of a tangy like Frank's red hot is fermented? There's quite okay. a few that do that. Okay. It's basically just to add some sort of like yeah. zest to tang to the process. Is that where it tastes flavor. vinegary? Is that what 
Well, there's a lot of vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is very popular. I'm finding in a lot of yeah. hot sauces. But yeah, some of the fermentation they'll put. I need to get one of those like squig, like squiggly, crazy straw things that you can use to keep it like sealed and all that stuff. Because you got to yeah. be careful when you ferment because you've got all the cultures and stuff. Yeah. In there. But make I saw nice this. Uh, I saw this video of this girl. She was making her own kombucha at home, and she was like, "All right, it's been fermenting for two weeks or something <laughs> like that." And she opened it up and exploded everywhere. <laughs> she never got to try it. She was so excited to try it, and she couldn't because it exploded everywhere because the pressure. <laughs> she didn't have oh, it set yeah. up right. So I guess you have to air it out or vent. I don't know how that works, no but it was something. She didn't do something right. And it exploded oh, everywhere, man. It was funny. Like I, heaven's famous chili. Oh, yep. man. It's so... That mass loss of all <sighs> that work. Yeah. Poor thing. So just God. be careful with that. Make sure you're venting your fermented um, yeah. goods. Releasing whatever buildup of gases and stuff there are. Because I'm sure there's probably some that you need to keep, but some of it needs to go. I don't know. I don't I'll know look more into works. it. I've got. I'm waiting for a lot of the peppers to finish ripening, and then I'm going to start. I've already trimmed a couple of them off, and I made some jalapeno brittle, and it was really good. It was just brown sugar with some butter and a little bit of uh, oat milk, and then. Uh, How much jalapeno is it? A lot or just like little? Hints? I put a whole. I put a whole jalapeno in there, minced it up, seasoned all. And then I don't know how much butter, I couldn't tell you how much butter or sugar, but I put, actually didn't mean to make it. I meant to just candy them a little bit and then put those in the food I was making. But instead I was just like, well, a whole bunch of brown sugar fell out. So I was just like, fuck it. I'll just add some, uh, butter and a little bit of oat milk and Interesting. a little toffee. I, um, so there was this one time I got sent a, uh, I got sent a gift box from, um, it says, uh, what's it called? It's in Dallas. It's a chocolate shop in Dallas. I think it's called Dude, Dude's Sweet Chocolate. Hmm. Um, it's like it's, it's its own little small business in Dallas that makes all kinds of different um, chocolates and fudges and candies and, and cool things like that. Somebody sent me a gift box that was essentially a like a sampler of all the different things that they have and some really cool stuff in there. And this is when I first became a um, a pothead. This is when I was like uh, a, ah. just a couple of years ago when I was you know getting really high, and then I would raid their pantry and go through all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. So I got this gift pack of all these different chocolates and stuff, and all the stuff that was um, like, "Ooh, that sounds good!" And all, oh, I, I ate all that. And there were a couple yeah. leftover things that I was like, "Yeah, I don't know about that. That sounds weird, or I don't know what the ingredients mean on the I don't know weird stuff that I ended right. up just throwing in my pantry and I was like, whatever. So. I get really, 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 really high one day, really high. So I go on a raid looking at uh, what kind of snacks and trouble I can get into in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I got some of those chocolate bars and stuff. So I opened up this one chocolate bar that had um, – it was chocolate, but I, it also said that it had some seaweed in it and some other ingredients that I didn't know what it was saying or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, I've never, I don't, I've never had seaweed before. Maybe in sushi, I guess. I don't know, but like seaweed chips and stuff like that. I've never had that before. And I was like, but I thought it would be salty. So I was like, all right, this is going to be kind of chocolatey with some saltiness in it or something like that. Right. So I take it and I eat it, and it burns my mouth. Unbelievable, but I was chewing it for a while and already swallowed it before the burn kicked in. It burns the inside of my mouth and my throat. I'm like, what is that? What is happening? And keep in mind, I'm very, very, very high. Right. And so I'm reading the ingredients and I start Googling these ingredients. And there was some kind of, I guess, Asian pepper or something. It was a name mm -hmm. that I didn't recognize, the, ingre the name of the ingredient. But when I looked it up, it's like, this is a really hot pepper. So I'm like, okay, it's because it's a hot pepper. But then my next thought process was I'm having an allergic reaction mm. because I'm high and I'm psyching right. myself out. And I'm like, Thank I'm having you. an allergic reaction to this. And so because I'm getting anxious about this, I start getting hives on my face. As I know now is from my anxiety. Whoa. But I start getting these hives on my face and I can't breathe because it's super spicy and I'm mm -hmm. getting anxious about it. So... I took three Benadryl thinking, all right, I'm going to take my Benadryl and I'm going to feel better. Take the three, th the three Benadryl so my throat doesn't close up because I think I'm having an anxiety attack. Yeah, you got to breathe. Pass out 
like asleep because I am really high and I took three Benadryl and I woke up and everything was fine. Nothing happened. I was good. Hmm. It was just spicy. That's all it was. Um, But yeah, I don't think people should read or I don't think people should eat things that they don't know what they're eating, especially when they're high. I can get down with that. Although if I do, if I'm trying something that's probably a little outside of what my comfort zone is that I would be willing to just eat willy nilly, I prefer to not be told until after I've eaten it. Really? Especially for seafood. Yeah, like if, yeah, because, you know, people will be like, oh, this is the, you know, the anus of a squid or something. And it may be delicious, but if you know in your head that it's the anus of a squid, is. you don't, you Talk you'll, yourself out of it. Yeah, exactly. I get that. What's the weirdest I thing do. you've ever eaten? Um, Not that tasted the weirdest, but like, you right. know, the actual thought that of was it was like, odd oh. Thing. I ate some grasshoppers not too long ago, actually. And really? There was a bo- box of them, yeah. They were oh, okay. very, not very just good. Not in your front lawn? Like, yeah, no, not going out picking prepared. one. These were human-grade okay. grasshoppers. <laughs> and it was like dried out or something? Was it like... Dried out, dry and crispy, like a, like a little crunchy snack. I think it was bar- ranch-flavored. Oh. They were good. Do you... Um feel what does that taste like or what does that feel i feel like it's, i feel like whatever flavor you're gonna put on it that's what it tastes like you're not really tasting grasshopper you're tasting it's all just the ranch a, a slightly savory sort of but the feeling is like, like a do you feel the legs like i feel like i'm thinking of like mm, i had a leg stuck mouth. on one of my teeth oh. so i'm sure you could but it's, is that uncomfy it's so small no it was it it was no different than eating cracker honestly like or like a puff like a puff of something you know like a puff cheese puff maybe yeah or something you know one of the any any kind of cracker that's popped yeah and airy inside yeah that's kind of how it felt i don't think that i've eaten knowingly i don't think i've knowingly eaten a bug before i definitely have while riding bike i used to ride my bike a lot and i would have so many flies and stuff and whatnot if we were out or mosquitoes i guess gnats and stuff when we'd be going downhill we just wouldn't open our mouths if we were going downhill while riding our bikes. I don't think that I've ever had a bug in my mouth, even in a situation like that. (laughs) Again, I say knowingly. I think that probably, you know, we eat uh, in our foods all the time. There's little bugs and stuff that get in there and you just eat it and you don't realize it. Now, I know you're you're allergic to shellfish, right? Um, I'm, yeah, I think slightly. Sensitive? I'm sensitive. Slightly? Yeah. Okay. Has sensitivity to it. I get that. Like um, if I'm eating shrimp or something, I get the, the itchy throat for sure. Right. So basically I was going to say like, what is it? Shrimp and lobsters and stuff are basically like insects of the sea. Yeah. That's delicious gross. meaty ones. I think even if I wasn't allergic, I wouldn't eat those. That's gross. Yeah. I really like shrimp, lobster. I mean, I like all seafood really. I think lobster, I, I think I've heard seeds, like a, seaweed. I don't know if it, maybe it's a fake story, but like lobster mm. used to be like a trash food. Yeah. And, um, they're not kosher. S- somehow somebody, it became like socially, it became like a fancy food based on, I forget what it was, but it was like, even then people just thought of it was trash. That's not really food. And like only the poor people ate it, but then somehow yeah. there was a story or something that came out or whatever. And it became the fancy food. Have you heard that before? I have. Um, I don't know what the you know what yeah, thing that made it the, famous was. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, I remember hearing it used to be fed to prisoners and stuff, and I think yeah. it's because of how little meat is actually on there, and probably if it wasn't mm. cooked right, if you didn't you know if you didn't cook it right, it was probably not going to come out in pleasant texture. Yeah. And it had you know no super strong flavor. If you make soup out of you know seafood shellfish, oh, uh, like a good clam chowder. I love clam chowder. It's one of my favorite soups. And a bread bowl, sourdough bread bowl. That's the nastiest thing. Just the word clam chowder it's so to me. Good. It's so good. I think of like a gross, you know what I, never mind. That's really <laughs> graphic and gross, but I guess you can probably imagine where my head's going. But that, when I hear clam chowder, that just makes me sick to my Tapioca. stomach. Tapioca. Oh, yeah. no, thank mm-hmm. you. Speaking of clam chowder, I did buy some tapioca for dessert. And the, when I was buying, I was like, I don't care what uh, Stephen T. Had, had to like say. like a sex story or something. Not quite. Um, I've never had a tapioca pudding. Before. Have you had rice pudding? No. Never had anything uh, like you that. You don't like the mix of those textures, do you? 
Um, I'm not a big texture. I'm like the texture doesn't really bother me with foods. I just, I guess I've never just had the opportunity to eat it because I'm not in a nursing home. You know, it's just not something that is there in front of me. Don't put it on your your caretaker. Doesn't put it on your agenda. Bring it yeah, to, to your yeah. medicine after the mashed peas or whatever. I, like just not something. Something that. Well, happens. I like tapioca. I also like that the the bubble tea. The total tap, I like tapioca, that with the, the little ba- the little balls of tapioca. I think that's cool. It's that, but in pudding or a custard or something oh, like that. Oh, then why it's do people say why, How come only old people eat it then? And you? I don't, why does I, it have the I, connotation this is the first time of that? Bought it. I think you just give it that. I don't know why it's for old people. Not No, that's a thing that people think. That's not just me. I've never heard that outside of you. Tapioca people pudding is for old people? That's a I known thing. I can believe it, but... I, I it was unknown to me. There's something that you know that I didn't know, and I didn't even know the question to it. Well, like butterscotch candies, that's for old people. Yeah, I can see. Right? Um, well, I feel like I got also, what about saltwater taffy? Or do you associate that with like a state fair or something like that? Yeah, I, I think of okay. that as old timey, but not for old people. Okay, old timey, but not, that makes perfect sense. Man, I love that's so relaxing saltwater watching taffy. the saltwater taffy be the, made and the stretching yeah. of it. Yeah, there's a um, that or there's this um, guy that I follow on Instagram, or it's actually like a candy company, but they make um, basically like candy canes. But they do the stretching of this of this not dough, but the it's like it's like half liquid, half solid. It's this weird consistency. Hmm. Um, and he like throws it on this hook and stretches it out, picks it up and throws it back on the hook and stretches it out. Oh, it's sugar, so yeah. cool to watch. It's- so cool. Watching people make candy, especially when they get like they start with like the really large logs, and then when they stretch it out super thin, yeah. it's like you know, a little bit of coin. And seeing the picture shrink, oh my yeah, gosh. I would love to get into. I would love to take a candy making class because you can do a lot of that at home. Yeah, it's just you know we're not looking to make a, you know two thousand little yeah. candies or whatever. So I think we can totally do that. You should it's essentially you should some, just pure sugar. It's just how a you lot of sugar, it, a little bit know? of water you make. Yeah, and then I, I guess there's like some things that. Like Keep a cornstarch or something. Or yeah, exactly. Cornstarch. Yeah. From, from sticking and then the yeah. flavors. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make some candy. Got these vegan sour gummy peach rings. Vegan so sour gummy peach rings. Yeah. Most, uh, yeah, I guess most peach rings have that gelatin. Now that I'm thinking about it, they have that mm-hmm. squishiness of, of a gelatin. How it's is so it? It's so good. It's so good. Peach candy. I love it. There's um in my neighborhood, I don't know what it is, there's a bush or a tree that smells exactly like peach candy, and I love it. And I, hmm. I, it's always when I walk by this specific, and it's this house that has a whole bunch of like plants, and it's set up. They look like wildflowers and stuff. It looks, I love the way that it looks. Some people may mm-hmm. think of it as like unkempt or something. It's kind of wild, yeah. and there's different stuff everywhere. But I love walking by there, and it smells exactly like peach candy it's the coolest thing huh. i don't know what it i don't know what it is i haven't tried to look it up or anything like that but uh yeah i'm gonna have to make sure i keep plenty of plants around because it's gonna be i'm used to having a backyard or some yard for shepherd to run around and just me walking and have some grass i saw this thing and you may have seen this too where someone was growing grass out of a little mint tin what do you mean so they get a little tin of mints like altoids Put a little bit of dirt and then put like some grass seed, like the little tiny, you know, kind of grass, Why? grass seeds on there or chia or something Just like that. Because? So that they can have a little bit of a, a little lawn on their desk. You keep it on your desk and you can touch grass. So you're touching some plant. I like that. Life plants. That's interesting. I got my little desk plant over here. A little devil's ivy. Just doing I've well. uh, never had luck with with plants. I, uh, even the ones that like are indestructible, I end up killing somehow. It happens. I think I overwater. Yeah, so that's, that's probably one of the most common reasons I think a lot of plants because they don't like once a week. It's pretty good for depending on the soil and the plant, of course. And I've had succulents before, and I think those oh, are definitely yeah. overwatered. Even this devil's ivy once a week. Yeah. I um. The person I want to be living with, though, is like obsessed with plants. She has inside her home. It's gonna feel so nice. 
Mm-hmm. She has, I think last time we counted on, we were on FaceTime together. She has 40 indoor plants. Like I'm, wow. when I say she has a lot of plants, she has like a ton, a ton of plants. She has the, um, like grow lights like that. Mm-hmm. I thought was just for people that were growing weed, but like you can, you, you every plant loves that. I didn't know that. I thought that's all it was for. <laughs> and I was like, what do you, what do you have those for? But yeah, she, yeah. So, so turn those, turn those on. Um, she has them hanging all over the house. She has them in the bathroom. She has this cool ivy that's in the bathroom that's like crawling yeah. on the walls. Um, oh, that sounds great. All kinds of all kinds of cool stuff. So I'll be kind of venturing into that a little bit. But um, there you go. I'll probably put some plants in my room and just tell her, all right, I need you to take care of these. I'm not going to touch them. Want to water them. I just want yeah. to enjoy them. I don't even want to be the one to water them. I don't. I, mm-hmm. I want her to do it because I trust <laughs> uh, she has a good track record with that. That's a lot of plants. That's a and her Crazy house isn't very big. Day. She has. Uh, she, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll have to send you pictures, or like especially whenever I move in, you'll be yeah. able to see um, here on the show. But uh, yeah, it's it's really cool. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna get. That's one of the reasons I want a little more space. Is I want to have all my grow shelves going. Yeah. So I want to have start doing the micro greens again. So just have that sea of green and red and all these other colors and smells and stuff in the living room or like near my desk. Yeah, and then. Uh, have the big lights and get some indoor plants going. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, I'm not in a rush just because with all the peppers, I can just harvest them and I want to be able to, but start just start getting my indoor plants. Cause I think up in Maine, even when when I was in an apartment, I had about 14 plants inside. Wow. I lost them with the weather, (laughs) but when I was, just cause it got too cold. Yeah, I went on vacation and I didn't keep it up long Uh, enough. Yeah. So that was a thing. You also went like, Excuse me. Mm-hmm. That distemper's kicking in. You told me a story one time. So you lived in Maine, and I guess it gets cold in Maine, huh? Right? It can get pretty cold, yeah. Pretty cold. You told me a story one time that you left on vacation or whatever, and you came back, and your toilet bowl, all the water in it was frozen solid. That can happen, yeah. I don't even – I can't even fathom – how cold it has to be for the inside of your home, the toilet bowl inside of your home to be frozen solid. Well, the pipes, thinking about it, the pipes go act as a heat or as a cool sink, I guess what we call a heat sink that goes directly from outside all the way up to the toilet. And so if you think about it, it works the same way like that a radiator would on the back of a fridge or something. And you can keep stuff frozen in a fridge or a freezer. So I, you know, I'm not super surprised that just that that bit of, bit of water in the toilet bowl. Wow! If you don't yeah. have your pipes properly insulated and stuff, you're getting a lot of cold water going up there, and that water and the pipes will carry that temperature all the way up, all the way over there. And really, there's nothing you can do until it gets warm enough outside for that to melt, right? Use it, flush it regularly, you know. Warm but it like, up. if it's already frozen solid, there's oh, nothing yeah. you can do. You're screwed. And you got to be careful. Like, you don't want to put you want to put just room temperature water once room temperature gets to be a little warmer because yeah sometimes if they are frozen there isn't anything you can do you just have to go to the bathroom outside but what they said is like if you think about drinking water if your toilet's frozen you're into water you know going through your sinks probably out too so you got to fill a bathtub and they would say hey when a blizzard comes in fill your bathtub up with water because you can always boil it melt it on your stove if it freezes there but if it's frozen you can't you're not bring getting any water, any water. In. yeah wow and then, like an emergency situation, I think like one thing we had someone tell us was and they had to do this at a cabin one time, was you unplug your free your freezer, you put anything warm that you want in there, and I is- isolate that, and then just keep anything cold outside. And I would do that; I kept drinks and stuff cold outside. There was so much snow, you could set it up, you know, yeah, on a pick lo- level. Like wow. today, I was in a rush to get all the frozen food put away or frozen food put away right when I got home. Yeah. Up there, I would that would be the last thing I would take out of the cars. I'd leave all the frozen Just food Just leave it in there. It, cold. it was colder outside than it was in the freezer, so. Wow. That's crazy. I could never awesome. live somewhere like that. I couldn't. For like a month, I'd be down. But for uh, three or four months, no thank you. That's too Did long. you know there's beautiful nature in the Czech Republic? There is. I didn't know that. I didn't realize there was anything in the Czech Republic outside of um, Prague. 
I didn't know that. Like I knew that, I guess, in the back of my head, but I've never thought Mm -hmm. about it. Somebody had posted these beautiful pictures of this like river and woods and like these like really cool things. And it said, enjoyed my trip to the Czech Republic. I was like, what? Yeah. And I say that because you're Czech. Um, Your grandmother has a house out there. You've visited many times. And from your pictures, I've never even seen that. Uh, I think I've taken some good pictures. I haven't posted all of them. There's just... I guess from what I've seen, when I say that, I don't think I've seen pictures since MySpace of you in the Czech Republic. Exactly. You know? Oh, so, yeah, those pictures. Yeah, that's all That's all that I, I can think of. But uh, I want to go out there with you. I know we've talked about it before, just yeah. you know, farting around. But I legit want to go out there, and especially the with you, thing. you would have the, the hookup. And there's also, have you ever heard of <laughs> Czech Hunter? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. Well, don't worry about that. There's some people that are there's some people that are listening that know what that is. Is that they can Google it? Um, but I want to be part porn? of that. Yeah. Is it porn? Oh, yes. okay. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. <laughs> it's one of your favorites. Wow. It is. It is. They're doing it in castles. Is or I guess all the scenes are in Prague. It's the only city it's, that uh, exists over there. Yeah. It's uh, else, just a little village. Yeah. Google it after when uh, okay. I see what I'm talking. It's one of my favorites. But waking up in the morning and then riding a bike through the countryside to go get breakfast at some little pub somewhere or go to the deli or at the grocery store, it's really nice because it's California weather over there for, during yeah. the summer. But just fields and just the colors of sunflowers, whole fields of sunflowers or wheat or hops, a lot, a lot of hops. Beer's really big over there. And so just riding your bike through all that into little towns not even towns a lot of them are just villages it's a handful of houses maybe some shops but can we okay there for cheap um now since since it's in the northern hemisphere it has the same seasons as we do right correct because it's like the southern hemisphere has the opposite right like when it's winter here it's summer there vice versa so like late summer early fall could me could we go on a trip out there next year Next summer, early fall? Yeah. Potentially, yeah. Let's start working on the logistics of that, like now. Okay. Like planning out where we would stay, all this, like, so we can figure out financially what we would need. Right. The tickets I over there are going to be crazy expensive. That's going to be the only thing. That's the main thing, right? That's it's going to yeah, be what, the like $2,000 for a ticket. Yeah. But then it's going to be. But uh, when we're there, we're like, we're like kings, right? Depending doesn't on our, where you go, Germany dollar? is expensive. Germany it, is expensive. Really? In Czech, you can eat really well. Yeah, there's a red, there's a winer, there's a vineyard, excuse me, down the road, like two villages over from where my family's house is, and you can get like a three, four course meal with a couple of drinks, yeah, for like thirty, forty bucks, dude. And it's all really good food, and they have a lot of vegetarian options too. Um, that's growing over there a lot. Nice uh, having those sorts of things, so you have options over there, even at some restaurants. Um, what is uh, Czech cuisine? What so is the, like the, the national dish the spices, is um, kind of stuff. called svičkova. They're all like gravies, a lot of pork, uh-huh. um, but there's some like rabbits, uh, quail, a lot of very savory, hearty meat and potatoes kind of dishes. Mm-hmm. They do. Is it uh, kind of like so sp- spicy or just really not really spicy? There are some like Hungarian, like their goulash, goulashes and stuff over there. Yeah, generally a lot of red pepper, a lot of paprika. Yeah, no, nothing like cayenne or habanero or anything like that. A lot of just you know pepper, paprika, generic red peppers put in there to give it some kick and be warm in the winter. But it's uh, it's like the national dish, for example, is called svichkova. It's a sweet white gravy. Normal, it's traditionally served over rabbit, um, or I think maybe goose. I think rabbit though. And then it's just served with dumplings. They love their dumplings over there. Uh, and then of course vegetables. They grow a lot of garlic. They are one of the largest, I think, exporters of garlic. Really? Compared to you know like per capita or something like that. Yeah, something yeah. about there. Garlic's a very serious cash crop over there for them. That's great. I and, love garlic. Uh, and hops, they also grow, make a lot of beer, so they grow a lot of hops. Nice. I can't wait. We're going to do this. I'm excited. Flow over there. I mean, it's worth it. If we can make two to three weeks happen out there. Yeah, I feel like ideal. that's the way that we would need to do it, especially like with your, we're not going to be, you know, renting a room at the Hilton that's going to be, you know, $300 right. a night. We can get 
you know, you know, a place to just to sleep and stuff like that. We can kind of uh, just wing it, you know, um, and just hang out. It doesn't have to be a, all right, let's go on this tourist and this thing is, um, you know, having days to just even stay around the place where you're, you know, you're staying at just to, you know, catch yourself up and whatnot. They have running water and electricity out there. Um, so, and they have toilets indoors now. It wasn't always the case with this house. So we have Wi-Fi. <laughs> we have toilets indoors. <laughs> it's a huge selling point. Usually just outside in the backyard. Not toilets little... indoors since 2012. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's on the welcome sign yeah. of the Czech Republic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just step off. Now the with plane indoor plumbing. <laughs> oh, God. But you'd also love Prague, getting to be out there and just the, the culture. It gets like, sketchy at night, though, right? Yeah, you got to be. But I guess when, any, it, when, it gets real, dark. when you think about it, any big town is like that. You know, yeah. late at night here in San Diego, there's some sketch shit you got to be careful for. But this, you get targeted if you're you, you are specifically targeted if you're a tourist. So they hear you speaking English, they know, okay, most likely. And got there's, it. There's also things where the police are in on some of it with, like, some of the clubs and whatnot. And so they'll show up to also, yeah. So you got to just. But I, so here's, I'll fit in. Fine. Look, listen. Yaksamash. Yeah. Yeah, everyone that's always puts Czech. like a Borat, Borat twing onto it. Oh, that's because that's where I know that from. So I didn't know that. So but you yeah. told me that, that in Borat, he's speaking Czech the whole time, right? Whenever he's speaking Something another language. Something close to it, yeah. Some of it was Czech. I think it's just a Slavic kind of language that just, there's a lot of crossover words. But yeah, yeah it, was, it was pretty close to Czech. The Czechs all understood. Yeah. Back so I know is. that. So they'll know that I'm in a the place There you go. Up. And saying stuff, right and I go, yuck, Zemesh! And They'll see you as a gypsy, though, which is, uh, oh, you're too dark. You're, you're. They'll hold that little chart up next to your, to your cheek. What if I bleach my tone. hair? <laughs> wait, wait, blonde, like Steve show blonde. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh man! All right, we're. Uh, we I think we hit. If our you time. speak Spanish, you'll be good. Speak some Spanish. Right, really? We, uh, we, yeah, like from Spain, you have to learn Spain Spanish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Barcelona. I gotta do that like the T H on the C's. <laughs> Barcelona. That's they. That's how they talk. That's how they speak. From there, you got it down. You're, you're 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 good to go. No no, thugs will mess with us in Prague. Yeah. Plus, look at us with our mustaches. We look threatening. I'm gonna, you know, what I'm gonna try to do is so really I don't grow a lot of hair between my mustache and my beard. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is just grow Me out neither. the ends of the mustache hair to have like yeah. that like I get really wispy, wiry. Yeah, so all right, let's get out of here. Um I'm gonna go eat. I haven't eaten since breakfast. Yeah, we gotta yeah. So um people can find us. We have our website now. Oh yeah, the podcast is podcast. Yeah damngoodfriends.com there you go we have email addresses which i can't get into mine i'm gonna have i need i need your help with that okay um, what is it info at damngoodfriends.com yeah well there's also but then we also have our own remember we i was, also have I was trying to log in too so that it was um mm -hmm. steve at damngoodfriends.com and mikey at damngoodfriends.com yeah m-i-k-e-y i couldn't i couldn't get in there so i'll need your uh need your help with that but um it's good seeing you, buddy. Even with the it's weird nice glasses, I'm I'm happy to see you. There. Well, now it looks weird without it. Now I've kind of gotten used to it. So now it's a little odd. Yeah. Now you look a little funny. Okay. But I think I. You know what? I think we should keep the mustache thing going. What do you think? You want me to? Let's do it. We'll do it together. I'll, I'll let all this grow too. But I gotta shave all this. This is too patchy. Grow it out, man. Do it. No one's seen you at work. No, I mean we do some video chats with Zoom. But yeah, we'll grow it out. I think it looks good on us. All right, you got anything else you want to add? I got all that stuff. I'm gonna be making some chili in a couple days. Just uh, enjoying the time. Nice. I dig it. I think I'm off next weekend. I'm playing a board game, having a board game night. Not here. Or not a board game night. Board game day. It's a, like one of those board games that takes six to eight hours to play all the way through. Candyland. So we're doing that on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, the director's cut. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh my god, that'd be the worst. Just have it be like five times as long, and you just got it. Like you'd have cards that take you all the way from the end all oh, the way back. Oh man. Uh, 
classic though. So you got your you got your game night. Yep, Twilight Imperium is the name of the board. Tell everybody to put on deodorant. Make sure that's on the invitation. I know how people that play board games are. I know. We'll just we're in the invitation. We're just gonna scoop some deodorant out, mush it in there. That'll be we used to seal it out when they open it up. They just scoop it out. Just rub it right on them. Yeah, rub it in. All right, buddy. It's been a pleasure. Alrighty. I'll talk to you later. Love you. I hope you feel better soon. Thank you, my friend. Bye. Bye.